in the last video we talked about rods and rhodopsin and how rhodopsin and rods combine to make sure we can form a electrical impulse from a light impulse or light energy and these were the rods so these again the rod shape you can see the clear rod shape just like that that's a rod um, now we're going to talk a bit more about cones. Remember cones had a bit of a different shape, so they were more shaped like a cone. And this would be that same cone. The cone is basically very similar to the rod in terms of it has this outer segment. And this outer segment is shaped like so roughly. But it also has these different types of discs within it. And within these discs, we've got the photo, the photo, set, the light sensitive cells. In this case, they're not called rhodopsin. You can either call them photopsin or iodopsins. They're both, both both those names are okay in terms of whatever you prefer. But these ones detect a different wavelength of light. So we said that, for example, for the rhodopsin, remember, could detect that blue green. Blue green was the light that your rhodopsin in rods could detect. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. This one here. This is your blue green that the rods in um, rhodopsin can detect. Whereas in cones, we actually have three different types of proteins. So three different types of photoopsins. Uh, One that can detect wavelength of about 419. Again, don't remember, don't remember those numbers, but 419, which is blue. The other one can detect green. And there's another one that can, can detect red. Right, so you're gonna have one cone which has in its actual outer segment, which ha will have these blue um, photoopsins. The other one, another one will have green photoopsins and another one will have red photoopsins. We don't have one cone that has all three. There's one cone for each of the colors. So these are the three colors we can detect. Each one can detect a different type of wavelength. And the reason why we can, they can detect different types of wavelengths is because they have different types of photoopsins, right? So you can say this one has photoopsin blue, photoopsin green, and photoopsin red. It's not the actual names, but it just makes it simpler. But what this is, again, there's one protein. The protein in this case is in this case blue, green, or red. And also, just like with rhodopsin, there's a small molecule inside of it called the retinol, right? So the retinol is a small pigment, and there's a protein that is basically covering this pigment. Um, and sim again, you don't need to know these steps I'm going to go through in a second, but it's very much like with rhodopsin. You're going to have light coming in, so there might be blue light coming in, or green light, or red light. When light comes in, it breaks the two apart, so afterwards we've got the protein and the retinal by itself, and that will change the light into the electric impulse, which will then get sent back to the brain for interpretation, right? So if a blue light comes in, we have the blue cones being activated. If we've got green light, we've got green ones, and red, red ones. Now, for example, white light. So if you see white, what that means is that every single one of these has been activated, right? So green, blue, and red have been activated, and that gives us white light. If you see black, what that means is that none of these have been activated. I'm drawing with black, I don't know why, but um, yeah, if you see black, that means that there's no color coming out of it. There's no uh, light. None of these are being activated. Black means nothing. White means all of them. And then if you see blue, that means only this one. Green means only this one. And if you see, for example, let's say yellow, right? Yellow might mean that you have green and red being activated. So those two being activated gives you a color in between, and that would be red. But basically, these three cones allow us to see all of the colors. So green, pink. Red, obviously, red comes from red. Uh, light blue. There will be just different levels of cones that are activated that give you these different colors. But the reason why I'm mentioning all this is because dot point says identify, which means name or recognize. Identify that there are three types of cones, each containing a separate pigment sensitive to blue, red, or green light. Right. So you should know that. Yep, there's three different types of pigments. They're all photopsins. That's the overall category. You can call them iodopsins or photopsins. That's the overall name for them, but they are slightly different because each of them can pick up a slightly different type of wavelength, right? Blue wavelength, green wavelength, and red wavelength. And each cone, so there's three different types of cones, each will have a different type of pigment. So you don't find all these three in one pigment. Uh, sorry, all these three pigments in one cone. Each cone has its separate one. But combine them all together, and we can see all the colors of the rainbow. Except for we don't actually see black. Black just means there's nothing has been activated. Rods or cones have not been activated, that means we can't see anything. But hopefully that was useful.